It might be peanuts for now, but coffee, pineapples and tropical jackfruits could all be part of Northland's future food basket. The Ministry of Primary Industries has teamed up with the makers of Pix Peanut Butter to trial growing peanuts in three spots near Ruawai, Dargaville and the Kaiwi Lakes District, with the MPI investing almost $60,000 in the project. At the moment, PIX imports its nuts, but that could change if the feasibility study shows commercial peanut crops are viable up north. The test crop went into the ground in October. Declan Graham from Plant and Food Research is managing the trial. He explains why Northland could be peanut paradise. I've got to have around 18 degrees C to germinate soil temperature, and that's quite high uh, for New Zealand. So um, we've identified that the Podu area around Kaipara, and there'll be parts further north that would have an 18 degrees centigrade um, soil temperature in about October, November, because it's a 20-week crop. You've got to get them out of the ground by March or April. So therefore, you know, we want to maintain that right the way through. Um, and there wouldn't be many places in the country that would be able to... Um, produce temperatures like that for the soil. What about Gisborne or Nelson? Uh, yeah, possibly, but again, it's just those early season, you know, you're probably talking more about 14, 12, 13, 14 degrees, and it's about germination and getting them going quickly, and uh, so you can get a crop off at the end. Yeah. So you're trialling three sites that are in, in the Northland area. How's it going so far? Pretty good, actually. We, I was up there uh, last week, and uh, they uh, the 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 peanuts have started to flower, and when they flower, they throw a little peg down into the ground, uh, and the peanut f- uh, forms on the bottom of it. So uh, it's quite interesting because a lot of people think that peanuts might come from trees or bushes or whatever, but to to see them growing under the ground, it's um, it's quite something. I've got to say, it's the first time I saw it, so I was quite pleased. <laughs> so this is Kumara territory. Would would a peanut crops be then at the expense of Kumara, or how would it work? Do you reckon? Well, you know, Coomera do tend to grow on slightly heavier land, but um, <clears throat> we are looking at lighter land like the sand country. Um, so, but there are Coomera growing on sand country. The great thing about um, peanuts are, is that they're a restorative crop. So they put they put nitrogen back into the soil and internationally overseas, they're very often used as part of a rotation in between uh, crops that are quite hungry. So um, it's a, I would say that Coomera growers would probably see it as a benefit. So what's the potential here in terms of employment? I mean, how much demand is there for the humble peanut? Um, I I know a lot of people that like them. (laughs) Um, Peanut butter is pretty popular here. Uh, In fact, there's there's a couple of more than, probably more than two. Uh, peanut butter industries that are uh, uh, operating now. We're working closely with PIC. They see this as a, quite a good opportunity, really. Um, as far as uh, labour goes, I would say it's probably like it's like any of these arable crops, wheat, barley, peas. Uh, it's a it's a large-scale crop that would require infrastructure to manage. It requires um, it needs contractors, it needs farmers, it needs uh, and and it's instead of when you think about it, uh, for a lot of people, it could even be instead of pasture. So uh, rather than just going from one crop to another, it could actually be about pasture, uh, pastoral farmers going into peanuts as well. So if it turns out that this is the right place for peanuts, I mean, what about other stuff that, you know, some people might even find more exotic? What about pineapples, coconut, sugarcane? What about other crops? Could Is there possibilities? <sighs> yep. There is, there are. Um, I know that there are pineapples growing around Wangarei Heads. I've, uh, I haven't been there, but I've been told that they're doing pretty well. Uh, there are folk uh, who are growing coffee, and um, I've heard that uh, there are people uh, talking, you know, tens, maybe up to 100 hectares of coffee in the north. Um, we have got a plant and food research. We've got dragon fruit growing at our um, Kiri Kiri site. And that's dragon fruit that uh, we've been involved in breeding dragon fruit in Vietnam. So it's really good to be able to bring dragon fruit growing agronomic expertise back to New Zealand and to showcase that. Um, We import a lot of table grapes, you know, and um, there's a a market opportunity. Table grapes are growing in uh, the north already. Um, Boutique, but um, yeah, certainly. Yeah. So what is the end goal here, Declan? Because peanuts isn't the end goal, is it? It's it's kind of one of the stepping stones. I think what it's about is um, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, you know, climate change is a, is a, a very um, a current talking point and um, 
we can we can start to understand what are some of the uh, favourable favourable um, climates and growing areas for new crops that might be the the climate might be warmer. Uh, we might find that there are opportunities to grow things that we we couldn't grow previously. Um, of course, that always comes with um, other issues like you know rainfall events, etc. So it's all a bit of a look and a look see at the moment. But the way we've approached it, a plant and food, is uh, we've undertaken some projects to look at what the um, opportunities are around the uh, topographical, geographical, the soils, the um, the uh, whether or not a plant is actually suited. And so our scientist Brent Clothier and Palmerston North has led a project project in that area to look at uh, what crops and from that uh, we've identified a number of crops and in a few locations in particular but we're um, obviously doing more work. We've done Taranaki uh, recently, we've done um, the Kuiper district, uh, we're talking about doing areas in the further north and this is, uh, this, the, you know, it's of interest to district councils to understand what else might grow in their areas. So this is about uh, putting crops in that are suited to conditions rather than creating artificial conditions because there's a lot of debate about whether you should be irrigating crops or you should just grow what can survive in that area with the conditions that naturally exist. That's right. And, uh, I mean, the Provincial Growth Fund um, has uh, put some investment towards water storage in the north and that does provide opportunities uh, around that for growing crops that otherwise would not normally have suited, uh, been suitable. So it's a couple, it's a few things coming together. So it's not just so it's a, it's the infrastructure, it's also the expertise and and also the willingness and the motivation of people to try something different. On New Zealand farmers have always led the world in uh, their innovation and around the way that they can grow great horticultural crops and produce excellent yields. So what is the untapped market, do you think? Um, I think the untapped market in the first instance is homegrown product um, because it's not necessary. It's going to be, it could be some time uh, for homegrown product for the local market because it could be some time to get a, uh, an export industry established like that. I mean, when you look at the avocado industry, initially it was just a, for the local market and now, of course, it's a, a big industry. Uh, so I think it's probably initially it's probably a bit boutique-y. And it's uh, probably a bit of pride to think that you're eating or drinking something or whatever uh, that's been locally grown and probably makes feel, people feel, feel a little bit better about eating local and supporting their farmers, local farmers. And that's Declan Graham from Plant and Food Research.